If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you'll know that I'm incredibly fortunate and that I've tried out a lot of the current L-mount lens offerings already. I mean, I've tried lenses from Panasonic, lenses from Sigma, and also a few lenses from some third-party brands as well. And each lens that I've tried has its own set of advantages and disadvantages, but there's three in particular that stand out to me as being the absolute best of the best. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my three favorite lenses for the L mount system, and I'll dive a little deeper into the applications that I'd use each of them for and why they're shoulders above the rest, at least in my opinion. Before we dive straight into this topic low, let me give you a little bit of context on the work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I am a solo shooter without a team around me for 90% of my shoots, and I mostly shoot corporate video and photo content. So this includes everything from product videos to short interviews to talking head segments, all the way through to social content and anything else that a corporate entity may need to advertise their product or service. Therefore, for me, I'll probably say that versatility is probably at the top of my wish list for every lens that I try, since there's a variety of things that I have to do on every single shoot. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the first lens on the list, and that is the Panasonic S-Pro 16-35 f4. I've been in love with this lens ever since I first got my hands on it, and it was the weight and the form factor that were the things that first stood out to me, since it only weighs 500 grams, and it's very compact for the punch it gives in image quality. It features a highly regarded focus clutch system that's seen on all S-Pro lenses from Panasonic, making it absolutely superb for precise manual focusing. It's also the snappiest lens I've ever used on the l mount for autofocus as well, and that's probably due to the double magnet linear focus motor that helps to make focusing a lot more speedy and accurate. And this is one of those features that are found in the S-Pro lineup of lenses that are often overlooked, and they make a huge difference for both photo and video. In fact, I've actually used the AF with this lens a few times on my paid shoots, and I normally would never do that when I'm shooting video for corporate work normally, but the 16 to 35 gives me a lot of confidence, and I've never had any issues when using AFC with it. In terms of use cases, this lens gets used for pretty much anything that requires a little more room in the frame. So I use it a lot for interior walkthrough videos, for privacy photography and event coverage, as well as vlogging and anything I do to camera for this YouTube channel when I'm out and about. Having a decent wide angle lens is definitely a must for my camera bag and the work that I do. And after trying out the Sigma 14-24, I still say that my preference is the Panasonic 16-35 thanks to all of the aforementioned attributes. I mean, it's lightweight, incredibly sharp, has very reliable air performance, and there's literally nothing else that you could ask for in a lens. Okay, so moving on to the second lens in this list, and that is the Sigma 28-70 f2.8. So this lens has already had a bit of coverage on the channel already, but I think it deserves its place in the top tier of lenses I've tried out for the L mount. And while it has its limitations, such as the compromised 28mm focal length on the wide end, and the somewhat unreliable Sigma AF when shooting video, it still does find itself attached to my camera for maybe 80% of the content that I make. It's compact and lightweight, so I'm guessing you're sensing the theme here in this list, and it has pretty amazing optical quality for the price. I mean, I was actually quite shocked at the sharpness of this lens when I first got it, pretty because I wasn't expecting such crisp image quality from a sub £800 lens. The 2870 is of course a cheaper version of the 2470 and it actually rivals that classic lens, but with many upsides that often get overlooked. I mean, it's a lot smaller and lighter than the traditional 2470 and it has the same constant 2.8 aperture and is significantly cheaper while retaining the same optical quality. This makes the 2870 my go-to lens for any gimbal work since it's very easy to balance and allows for a great scope of focal lengths without the need of tearing the setup down and changing lenses. It's also a go-to lens for any photography I find myself doing since I rarely need anything faster than 2.8 and it's so sharp that I really don't find myself needing anything else. So if you're looking for a lens for both photo and video that you can leave on your camera body for 80% of the time and not hurt your pockets too much, then the 2870 from Sigma is definitely the lens for you and that's why it gets my second place in my top three lenses. Okay, so now it's time for the third and final lens on the list, and that is the Sigma 85mm f1.4. Now, this lens is nothing short of perfection in terms of image quality, and it's by far the most optically pleasing lens I've ever used on any camera system. It has so many great features, like the ability to change between a clicked and declicked aperture for smoother transition between shooting photo and video, as well as its own custom button and incredible build quality. This lens is definitely my favorite one for portrait and product photos, as well as any artistic detail shots where I really want to blow up the background. And like I said in my video that's specifically about the Sigma 85mm, it genuinely makes me excited to go out and shoot and therefore makes it a definite lens to consider. This lens does have its drawbacks low, like the absolutely terrible AF for video and quite a higher price tag. So if you are in the market for an 85mm that holds up a lot better for video AF and doesn't break the bank as much, then I would definitely recommend the Panasonic 85 1.8 instead. But if you do want the absolute best optical performance and a more premium feeling lens, 
lens, then the Sigma 85mm is definitely the way to go. This lens doesn't get used nearly as much as the other two that I mentioned in this video, and it's still very much a specialist lens in terms of what I use it for, but nevertheless, it's still amazing and it definitely deserves its spot in my camera bag. As an honorable mention on this list as well, I'd just like to throw in the Panasonic 24 to 105 into the mix, since that lens is also incredible and was literally the only lens that I used for over eight months. It's super versatile and the optical image stabilization makes it a superb option for any handheld shooting. And the difference in reach from 70 millimeters to 105 millimeters is definitely noticeable. And of course the compression that you get at 105 millimeters actually makes the F4 quite pleasing for blowing up the background and putting emphasis on your subject. So if the F4 is something that is stopping you from getting that lens, you don't need to worry about that. The compression does that for you. And in fact, if you have just bought into the Elmont system and you're looking for a worthy upgrade to the 20 to 60 kit lens, then I'd say that the 24 to 105 would most likely be my top recommendation, either that or the 2870 from Sigma, but they're both amazing lenses. So between all of these lenses, I'm able to shoot literally anything and everything that I find myself doing on a regular basis. The 16 to 35 is a perfect wide angle lens with maximum versatility and image quality. The 2870 is a lightweight and affordable gem that spends a lot of time attached to my S5. And the Sigma 85 1.4 gives me all of those flattering product shots and crispy details that I could ever ask for. And I feel extremely confident that between these three lenses, Lenses, I can do everything that I need to and more while making the most of the stunning image quality that comes from the Panasonic S5 and the Panasonic S1. By the way, please feel free to leave a comment below um, telling me the lenses that you use on your L mount cameras. I mean, there's probably some lenses that I've not mentioned in this video that you think are worthy contenders to be the sort of top three lenses. So tell me your top three lenses and I'd be really interested to hear them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful, entertaining or interesting. And if you did, then please consider subscribing because because I do make a lot of content here surrounding the Panasonic S5 and the L1 ecosystem in general. So if that's your thing, then this channel will definitely be for you. And yeah, hopefully I shall see you in the next one.